My role at Cisco is the Senior Director of the Legal Technology Solutions Group, which means that my group is responsible for all of Cisco's legal automation efforts. We're chartered with making the attorneys at Cisco more productive in supporting the business. By far the largest challenge we face in the Legal Technology Solutions Group is the need to support a global business. Cisco has a $40 billion run rate annually and we support that with fewer than 175 lawyers. And the only way that we can do that is to scale our knowledge across multiple time zones uh, on, a, on a concurrent basis. And so our key challenge is addressing the breadth of that business with a relatively small number of legal professionals. Technology is clearly the key scaling factor that we have in addressing this, this key challenge. Uh, we use technology both to allow cross interdepartmental collaboration, so knowledge sharing among our experts, but also to reduce the amount of time that our experts spend addressing repetitive mundane tasks. We're very uh, focused on a core versus context methodology where we focus our lawyers on addressing the right tasks and technology allows us to automate the uh, low value add transactions that often consume a great deal of a, of a lawyer's day. A, a good example of, of that is simply the need to obtain approvals both internally and externally on transactional documents. We use uh, an electronic approval engine internally to collect those approvals so that we don't have to route things physically uh, for approval and signature. Married up with that, another good example is our electronic acceptance technology. We use an internally developed application to collect internal signatures on documents. And to date, we've run more than 25 million transactions through that system. A key collaboration challenge is allowing each of our independent professionals to have access to the collective store of knowledge uh, that's represented by the department and all of its members. As part of that strategy, we use the technology that we license from Legal OnRamp that we call OnRamp Exchange, or ORX. ORX serves as the knowledge hub for all of our interchange and knowledge sharing within the department. Our negotiated guidance, our negotiation guidance, or our playbooks are stored within ORX as wikis. Our, our key contract language and templates are stored there as well. And we have the ability for any member of the department to pose a question to everyone else in the department and solicit their feedback. So as we deal with time zone challenges, for example, or subject matter expertise challenges, it allows a user in, in one geography, let's take South Africa as an example, to pose a question to his peers in other emerging markets and through the on-ramp exchange, collect their feedback uh, through any device any device with, a, with email connectivity so, or a browser. So the users have the ability to respond to, uh, to the questions or inquiries via a browser, or the, the same questions get routed automatically through our Outlook email system, and a user can respond via their BlackBerry. So this on-ramp exchange, again, serves as the hub for all of this knowledge sharing. At Cisco, all of our collective knowledge in, in various subject matter areas is collected in a series of playbooks. These playbooks start with the very fundamental explanation of the legal uh, topic that we're addressing, along with Cisco's baseline positions. Layered on top of those baseline positions is negotiation guidance that we've collected over the years from the department members so that they can benefit from all of the past negotiations that our various team members have, have conducted. So we use the playbooks in ORX to collect that knowledge in a way that is easily consumable, uh, whether online or offline, by anyone in the department. A key capability of the playbooks is the option to plug in our outside council partners into the conversation. In this controlled environment, we have the option to include outside counsel at the discussion level, at the playbook level, really at any level of granularity that the individual user deems appropriate. For example, if we have a specific 
IP indemnity question that we want to, our outside counsel to weigh in on, we can open the playbook or the conversation to that one topical area. Or we can open the entire playbook for areas like HR law or privacy law or sweepstakes guidelines, areas of the law that are context from our perspective in that they don't add to Cisco's ability to compete in the market, we can outsource the entire function of the maintaining of that subject matter expertise to a law firm. And we do that through the playbooks on ORX. There were two key reasons that motivated us to spin out our earlier technology that we hosted internally onto on-ramp exchange. The first one was simply a cost decision. Over time, it proved that we could license the technology from legal on-ramp that, support, that supports ORX more cheaply than I could continue to pay my own staff to maintain and develop that platform. As a corollary to that, every dollar that I spend on maintaining existing applications is a dollar that I'm not free to spend on other innovation. And so we're very actively looking for opportunities to move our project and requirements and our needs onto outside platforms that we can use in a replicable way. The second very important reason that we outsource this capability is that it opens up the ability over time to us to collaborate not just internal to Cisco, but with our outside counsel partners and also with our peer companies. There are lots of legal matters that we face on a regular basis that do absolutely nothing to add to our competitive differentiation. And we're happy to share our experience and our approaches with those context legal subject matter areas with peer companies as part of a uh, give and take exchange where we all benefit from the knowledge of the collective. Another core component of the value proposition for ORX is that it's not just for Cisco's benefit, it's also a key part of the value proposition that we offer to our outside counsel and support staff. The value that they derive from this is the ability to rapidly acclimate themselves and become familiar with Cisco's standard operating procedures and positions when it comes to common legal issues. Cisco's been at the forefront of advocating for alternative billing arrangements, and so our relationships with law firms are largely performance-based. We do very little work on a time and materials basis. We don't use hourly billing except in, in very unique circumstances. As a offshoot of that, a result of that, is that the law firms derive their profitability by being able to quickly become familiar with our business models. Since they're not able to charge us, for the work that they spend in becoming familiar with the issue. And so giving them access to the playbooks that we host on OnRamp Exchange, giving them access and ability to monitor the internal discussions we have in the forum portion of ORX helps them to become, become more profitable as they provide those services in non-traditional billing arrangements. Cisco's focus on using non-traditional billing arrangements has absolutely nothing to do with the desire to, to kill law firms or to make them unprofitable. Um, we simply believe that the law firm practice model must evolve just like all of our businesses have evolved over time. And a core component of that is using the same collaboration tools we use inter internally to increase our productivity with our outside counsel partners. In order for that partnership to work, the firms that we employ must become comfortable with the use of technology in these collaborative ways. And so having that baseline familiarity with our mindset and our collaboration tools creates a real uh, competitive advantages for the firm, uh, competitive advantage for the firms that we select. The need to have ready access to that corpus of information is met by using tools like legal on-ramp and on-ramp exchange. ORX is literally the knowledge management hub that serves all of our other automation efforts within Cisco to focus on those core versus context dichotomies and focus our attorney's efforts on the areas where they provide the most value on things that are differentiable and make us better able to compete in the market. One very important example of these technology innovations that support this 
ability for me to work remotely is the Cisco telepresence solution. Mark Chandler, our general counsel, manages a staff of lawyers led by a, a, a senior team of approximately 11 people. The bulk of that team is dispersed throughout the country. We very rarely meet face to face. Another proof point of the value of the telepresence technology is our ability to collaborate with outside counsel in high stakes litigation. One example of this comes from our Scientific Atlanta subsidiary, subsidiary that recently had some Supreme Court litigation in the Stone Ridge case. As part of our litigation strategy, we hired our outside counsel for this Supreme Court matter using telepresence, and we literally did not have a face-to-face -face meeting with those outside counsel until we met on the courthouse steps on the day of oral argument. We used telepresence to confer with our outside counsel, do all of our trial planning, do all of our strategic uh, work leading up to that case using the telepresence technology. Over the next two to three years, a key trend that I expect to see continue to expand is the reuse of information that already exists. Uh, a key benefit of our new information culture is that it's relatively easy to access information across a wide variety of sources. The reality is, is that there's relatively few cases of first impression anymore. And companies like Cisco face issues very similar to other Fortune 50 companies. We, we, tend to fo we tend to face the same problems on a regular basis, and we all come from law firm environments. We know how the practice of law works from the law firm side, and we understand that the law firms, one of their key benefits is the ability to capture their knowledge and regurgitate that information and share it with their clients again. The challenge in this new evolving market is that that level of transparency makes it difficult to charge for the same body of work multiple times when you have a sophisticated client that understands that they're paying for the $99 will. That metaphor works very well. We all recognize that that $99 will is a template that exists on somebody's hard drive. And there's relatively new, there's relatively little legal interpretation that's required to use that template over and over again. Our focus as an internal department is to derive as much benefit as we can when it comes to the real cases of first impression or the cases that require sophisticated legal analysis and then take those other more common legal terms and legal issues and make it easy for our internal counsel and our outside counsel and peer companies to access the information that we've all gone through before and used in the past. Our view is that the evolution of the legal industry is such that the use of these collaboration technologies will become more and more prevalent and at some point they'll become just as ingrained into the practice of law as the evolution away from uh, dictation and typewriters to word processors and other uh, knowledge management systems, case management systems, etc. At, at some point we're going to reach a, a critical tipping point where the ability to use these tools is uh, as a baseline expectation uh, of students coming out of law school, of practicing lawyers, and we accept that that may mean that some of our outside counsel are going to have to modify their work, um, their work structure, their outlook on, on work life, but it, it also presents a, a, a wealth of opportunities. It's very exciting. The use of these technologies has been incredibly important to me personally. I have practice law for Cisco for 10 years, and I have spent that entire 10 years working almost exclusively remotely. My ability to succeed at Cisco as originally a technology licensing lawyer was entirely dependent on the use of these collaboration tools so that I could partner with my peers, both in the legal department and my clients within the company, dispersed across the world by the use of collaboration tools like OnRamp Exchange, like our uh, legal automation framework. A concrete quantitative example of the value of telepresence and network connectivity generally is the dramatic reduction in Cisco's travel costs associated with the use of telepresence. Prior to telepresence, 
our annual spend for travel was approximately $750 million a year globally for travel within Cisco. After telepresence, we've been able to drop that to $250 million per year for travel expenses. And our expectation is that as this type of video connectivity becomes more and more prevalent, we'll see corresponding reductions in costs and at the same time, give people back the time that is so important to us in our lives to strike that work-life balance that allows us to be both more productive and more present for our families and loved ones. The use of these automation tools and network connectivity and telepresence and all of these technological enhancements to our legal practice follows a, a diffusion curve just like all technologies and we all as, as departments and as law firms that we partner with have a choice at what point we want to join in in adopting these new technologies. We have the choice to be either early adopters or late adopters and our position at Cisco is that the early adopters are going to have a very well-defined competitive advantage against other firms and service providers in this area. The nature of the business is that we all compete and we differentiate ourselves by being better available to provide services. And we're very confident that the use of these tools allows the firms that we partner with to not only provide better services to Cisco, but to be better situated to provide services to their other clients as well. Again, the, the practice of law must evolve just like all other business areas. It's an operational function within most uh, corporations within the United States and I think globally as well. And as, as we evolve towards more of a management-based infrastructure, an expectation that will be managed by common metrics just like any other business support function, it's these automation activities, these efforts to focus on attorney productivity that will create the sustainable competitive advantage that differentiates us both in providing services to our internal internal clients and selecting service providers that provide services to us.